I've got here a, a beautiful handmade jazz guitar, big bodied, stunning thing, using incredibly fine timbers, solid inlays. The, the craftsmanship is good, if not great, in most regards, and we're gonna have a quick look at it. But I picked this up for, I think it was about 700 pounds at auction. We are interested in buying Gibsons, Strats, and other brand names that are basically owned by Gibson or Fender, I suppose, these days. If, if you are shown an old Gibson uh, or, a, or a Gibson of any, any sort and an equally, if not better made, beautiful uh, instrument of the same design, most people turn around and grab the damn Gibson. And this is just annoying. On behalf of Great Guitar Giveaway, uh, we are setting up a, the Dorset Guitar Museum, as I'm sure you've heard me say, and we are selling tickets to win guitars such as this one in order to raise money to buy guitars for the museum. Funnily enough, to buy Gibsons and Fenders and things because that's also what people want to see. But I just can't believe how little instruments like this are going for. And I thought that uh, today, very quickly, I would, I need to change the strings. I thought uh, I would have a look and show you what's going on inside. Just talk about the quality of what's going on and uh, how frankly this is worth three or 4,000 pounds of anybody's money. It stresses me out, can you tell? Let's have a look at this guitar. Okay, so before anything happens, we are going to find some issues here, predominantly with the fretwork, actually. Uh, we've got some hemi, semi, sem, semi hemispherical fret ends. I always stumble over that. Uh, and the, the frets aren't particularly well polished. Uh, that's possibly down to age as well. But the actual features of the guitar are pretty, pretty cool. Look at how tight this spruce top is. Uh, now, frankly, this top, that's worth much of what I paid for the entire guitar. Uh, it's very, very well carved. We've got bound F holes. The carving is incredibly well done. There are a few dents. It's second hand. It's been well played and well loved. I'm going to have to do a repair on a dent in the, uh, uh, in the neck. Not hide it, but make it more comfortable to play. The back and sides, flame sycamore, beautifully bent, beautifully, uh, beautifully done, absolutely. I'm not a fan of how chunky this tailpiece is. We could have uh, could have carved the edges away a little bit and made it uh, a little bit prettier, I suppose. The end of the uh, the neck there is a separate piece of wood, which is uh, which is the way it's supposed to be done. I'm not sure if this was a commercially built bridge or not, but uh, it all it all looks good. Uh, same issue with the headstock. It's just it's just a bit big, isn't it? And then uh, we've got a bone nut. It's quite well made. A little bit, uh, a little bit high. Robert Deacon or Bob Deacon. I don't know who this guy is. I can't find uh, any evidence other than a uh, a single mandolin that may well have been made by him. Uh, I don't know what else he's done, but. It genuinely looks like it's had training. These inlays are great. I really like how we've got uh, little divots taken out of them. Uh, negative ebony thumbnails. I just think it's, it's beautifully done. Serial number 00102. So I'm assuming this is the first guitar he built in 2002. Okay, flipped over, same sort of thing. Very, very, very high quality work on the carving. Uh, the binding, the, the purfling, etc., is all looking impeccable. Uh, it's, been, it's been used, there are dents and bits and pieces. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on this neck. I think it's maple rather than sycamore. Uh, here's a dent that I'm gonna be drop filling and repairing. The edges of the headstock is very, very, very sharp. And uh, that's something that uh, uh, hobbyist or new builders do quite a lot. You, you really do need to round these over uh, if you're gonna have a, a lacquered finish on it. But overall, it is greater than the sum of its parts. Okay, with this repair, I'm just gonna use some melamine lacquer. Melamine lacquer is basically nitro with, uh, it's catalyzed nitro with, a, with added melamine. I think it actually might be something called Plasticoat 
which is a water-based sort of poly kind of stuff. And just because it has plasti written in it, or plastic in the name, it's actually a very good, very hard finish. Uh, however, there is now a blemish on the back of this uh, neck where the repair was. I was hoping it was going to be a little bit less obvious. It just is what it is. There was a great chunk taken out. It is a pity that we've got uh, this discoloration. But, uh, but this is going to be very comfortable. This is 1200 grit, so we, I want the whole neck to feel the same. 1200, 1500, 2000, 2500 on the buffing machine, and we'll be done. Hell, it's tempting to leave that not shiny. Be quite comfy. I'm uh, going to avoid the uh, buffing machine and see what happens with our uh, super ultra mega versatile polishing compound. Who needs a buffing machine? So genuinely the trick is proper prep. Go through the grits properly and, uh, and you can get a, a perfect finish. This, that's part of the story of the guitar. It, it, it is what it is. If I strip the whole neck down and experiment with different finishes, uh, we might be able to find what this is. I think it might be plastic coat or something like that, uh, or some sort of an acrylic, but uh, yeah. It's a used guitar, it's a dinged guitar. It now at least doesn't feel like there's a major ding there. Uh, how would you repair this? Let me know in the comments. All right, so very solid, very chunky. That's from a, uh, a cello or something like that. You can just buy these, they're quite cool. I do like how we've got an aluminium insert. Uh, not the strongest, but uh, certainly stronger than, uh, than just wood. So that's, that's had some thought. And then, uh, yeah, a bit of ivory or bone or something under there. Good bridge as well. I like that. Interestingly, we've got two witness marks uh, where the bridge have, has been. Uh, there and and there as well, so yeah, the guitar used to be a lot more yellow. UV people, she's not your friend. These frets are, they're actually pretty terrible. Uh, and that's, that's sad. Everything else is incredible. The, the inlay, the quality of this, this inlay work here, that is, that is genuinely very, very, very well done. It's had a lot of playing all the way up the neck, actually. Well, most of the way up the neck. But uh, yeah, these frets, they suck. As much as I do not want to, like seriously, I just don't want to, we're going to have to do a refret uh, in order to get the most out of this guitar. It is on the Great Guitar Giveaway. Uh, emphasis on great guitars. We're not going to give something out that is, uh, is not amazing. So uh, here we go. Uh, refret, ahoy. Okay, so the first thing to do is uh, warm up the frets uh, with a soldering iron. This decompresses the wood around the fret tangs, loosens it up just a little bit. It also uh, delaminates any glue or melts any glue uh, holding onto the bottom of the tang and should minimize any tear out. Fret slot cleaning saw because obviously some of these slots are not deep enough and I'm just going to use the masking tape to, uh, to set a depth. The maple binding is obviously all dirty and uh, yeah, good old scraper before we put the frets in just to clean that up. Maple binding and ebony fretboards just don't go well together. Same thing goes for ebony, uh, ebony fretboards and maple binding, or maple inlays. Almost the right radius. I'm going to make it a little tighter, 
just a tad.
Right, and that there is a lesson in uh, what happens when you start repairing guitars. Sometimes you end up needing a refret when you didn't really think that that was the case. End result though is uh, we've got a new set of strings. The action is fantastic. It plays very, very, very well. Sounds as good as I can make a guitar sound. It's a very, very cool, very, very cool instrument. And don't forget that she could be yours. Go to, go to greatguitargiveaway.com and uh, the profits from this are going to, well, supporting the Dorset Guitar Museum and creating the Dorset Guitar Museum, which uh, is gonna be absolutely freaking awesome. And uh, yeah. <laughs>
infinitely better than it was this morning. Of course, it didn't have any frets at all this morning. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, go and buy tickets to win this guitar, and I will see you, I will see you next week when I'm planning on getting some guitar building done. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes indeed. Goodbye.